the first thing I would say about divine creativity is that it's born of God. Yes. Me. Yes, you're just a vessel that really just helped birth and create, created something. Okay, and if it's born of God, then He is the one. Yes, I'm a vessel, but He's the one who brings it to fruition. Like I think about it, any song that I've been a part of and that you've been a part of that like, I think about like, Give Me Jesus, I think, I didn't think that song was gonna do anything. To be, just to be really frank, you know, I was like, we wrote it, 45 minutes, great. 45 minutes? It's like 45 minutes, yeah. That's crazy. And it's like, your job is just to be present with God and present with what God's given you. And then ideas, thoughts, strategies will come to you. And your job is just to say yes and, ex and execute. They'll give you the grace to execute. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Handlebar Podcast. This is our YouTube channel. And we're so glad you're here. And I wanted to tell you about two things before the episode starts. Number one, I just wrote a book. Big Jesus. This is out now everywhere that books are sold. And I want to invite you to go get that book, especially if you're a Gen Zer. Man, I wrote this book for you. My hopes is that as you read it, it will spark wonder uh, and fascination in your heart for who Jesus is. He's a really big, big Jesus. Go get the book. Number two, I wanted to let you know that we here at the Handlebar Podcast are completely listener funded. Uh, you may have noticed if you're listening to the podcast platform that there's no ads also we haven't done a sponsor we've just been completely listener funded and i want to ask you if this podcast has blessed you uh, that you would consider giving you can give on our website which will be in the description below you can go over there you can donate five bucks ten bucks a hundred bucks whatever would be a blessing to you it would definitely bless us and it would help us continue to build the platform put more things out we love you we're so glad you're here enjoy the episode and don't forget to subscribe welcome to the handlebar podcast Hey everyone, welcome back to Handlebar Sessions. These are um, little snippets of conversations with good friends where we take your questions and we answer them. So I have my good friend here. His name's Oscar. What's up, guys? I'm sure a lot of you know him. What's um, up? He is amazing. And I'm so excited that you're here with us and so you're going to give us here. your wisdom because Oscar is an amazing piano player. He's an amazing MD, producer. The list goes on. But what I love most about Oscar is his pure heart for God. And it reminds me of the verse in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, the pure in heart will see God. Mm. When I think of you, I think of that verse. Wow. So I'm really Thank honored. You. Thank I'm you. honored that you're here. Means a lot. And I'm excited. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys, we have an Instagram. You can follow us at Handlebar Podcast. And then our website is thehandlebarpodcast.com. So you can check us out there. We're going to get into the question. You want to ask us the question, Carla? Carlita. <laughs> What are your thoughts on divine creativity? It's a great question. Oscar has a lot of thoughts. Do you want to start? <laughs> or do you want me to start? Do you have something? I mean, when it, when it comes to creativity, I have, I just feel like that word has been so like overused at the church. You know, a creative person has like almost like a negative connotation to the church because they think of someone that has no, they're like, oh, he's a poor guy that's trying to make it in music, loves worship, is entitled. So we're trying to pastor them in worship. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Ooh, yeah, it makes sense. And I sense. feel like I've, I mean, I have felt that label on me. I have probably labeled people that way. So it's like a both hand. But just to say, it's like God created the heavens and the earth. So it's like to know that God is creative and creator. He created me. Anything that we see, like I even think about like Albert Einstein, no matter is created. I mean, no, it's not like created or destroyed. So in a sense, it was created in the beginning of time. So everything that we enjoy today, our iPhones, anything that's created, that's innovation, that's like has a sense of like a uh, progressive push or anything like that is like God created it. That is so true. Like it, it wasn't before like, and it was man who helped establish it, but it was like God you know, we have all the materials today to make a car. We have all the materials today to have airplanes, which is all creative. Because for a creative, it's like, for me, creatives are just problem solvers, in my opinion. Say that again. Creatives are just problem solvers. You creatives come, are problem solvers. So it's like you come up with a solution. You have an idea. You're like, I really think this can work. But everyone's telling you, no, it can't. But you're like, I feel like it can. And, and you have this internal feeling in your heart that like you can. So you try it, 
Next thing you know, we're flying in airplanes that are going five, 600 miles an hour to a destination. If you go to New York, it's three and a half, three hours and a half. Yep. So it's like, if you tell someone that a hundred years ago, they'll think you're crazy. But I think it's like with creativity, it's like even in our community at Uproom, which I really do appreciate our pastor, he says that creativity com- uh, comes from covenant. That's you so know, good. it's like me and my wife, Caroline, we created Sylvie and it right. came from Covenant. And I think for me, because it's like something that's created is birth. When something is birth, like I don't want my CPA to be in the birthing of my kid, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like, there's almost like an intimate thing, a choosing of that. I need to be in a relationship with them. Because when you're in a creative space, it's birthing. It's, I mean, you've given birth to two kids. Right. So you understand the messiness of creation. Oh, wow. That's good. You know, like you understand that it's not like, like you weren't, you, you couldn't choose Rosie's eye color. Nope. Get, couldn't even choose the day they were born. You couldn't choose the day they were born. <laughs> you couldn't choose any of that. Right. It was besides yourself. It was you're, beyond me. Yes. You're just a vessel that really just helped birth and creates created something okay that's good so divine creativity means that i am a vessel yes of god to birth something into yes. the world yes that's what divine creativity is that is so good it's almost like it's beside yourself like i think about any song that i've been a part of and that you've been a part of that like you know like i think about like give me jesus i think i didn't think that song was gonna do anything to be just to be really frank you know i was like we wrote it 45 minutes Great. 45 minutes? It's like 45 minutes, yeah. That's crazy. You know, I had a little piano intro, and then we started to sing it. And our friend Cammy was like, oh, what if we do, like, she starts singing the chorus. I was like, yes, that's oh, of awesome. of course she did. That's incredible. But, like, one, that was, like, besides myself, I wasn't overthinking anything. You know, like, everything just kind of came and flowed, and I was like, oh, like, the idea was there. I think there's four people in the group that helped birth the idea. And once it's out, it's like... You just kind of like, I tend to the idea as it needs. Similar to, I mean, I think we're, um, like you and um, and Rosie and Shepard, for example, like I, I believe, and you can probably speak into this, like the ship, the parenting style of you two, for them are very different. Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's like with creativity, with any idea, with any thought, with any song, with any with any problem that you face, it's like, the approach is almost different every time. So it's like, that's when, when I think of divine creativity, it's like, I think about covenant, first of all, with the Lord, second of all, with people. And it's like creating a space that like, one, no, no idea is the wrong idea. Two, sky's the limit. And we're just going to chase the idea until it comes into fruition. And at times I know for me personally, like, I've known I, I know I was my true self in the act of creating something when I'm done that I feel a little depressed. It's kind of strange. Say it again. Like I feel a little depressed, a little bit sad. Oh, like it's after over. it's done because it's over. Totally. Totally. You know, I think about like, you know, I'm not at this stage of life yet, but I was talking to my parents. And I, I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot. I love it. We can, we can. I want, you, I want to hear from you. It's like the moment like I graduated high school and I moved out of my parents' house. They felt a little sad and depressed. Oh, like, yeah. We felt sad because this is the end in a sense of us helping steward you in a sense, helping you create, cr- help create values in you, help steward you or where you're going. Now we have to let you go. And I remember when I did Abby's project, that's exactly how I felt. Whenever we turned everything in, it was like, it was like a high almost. Like I was like, oh my gosh, like it was like, we were like working late because we were like, we had so much, you know, we we're working until it wasn't done. It felt like, it felt like a giving birth. You know, it <laughs> felt like whenever like Sylvia, yeah. you know, it was like two in the morning, we're at the hospital and then it was eight in the morning and then the baby's coming, you know, it, it felt like that. But when we turned everything in, I was like, that's it. It's over. I guess it's just there. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, that's why I love about creativity. It's like, it's like one it's like, I don't think I do it for people. I do it for the Lord. Second of all, it's like when you truly get lost in that world of creating something, creating something beautiful, especially for the church. I believe the church needs to hear this. It's like when you choose to be true, true to yourself and true to the Lord and you create something that's true and honest 
with your instrument, with your music, with the language that you write. It's like, it's true. It's like people, people can hear that. And they respond to and, it. And they respond to it. Because I feel like a lot of times what happened with the church is like they have great voices, but they lost the soul. Mm. You know, they have great talent, but they lost the heart. And unfortunately, when it comes to creating like the connection to Jesus, yes. the connection to the spirit. Yes. Yeah, like, yeah. like the, like, oh man, I hear, yes, that makes sense. Like not singing or playing from your head, but from your heart. Your heart. Yeah. You know, it's like, like is, with you, you, you know, it's like, you're an incredible singer, you know, but I hear your heart. Mm. And it's like, there's people that sing better than you and people, and people yeah. that sing worse than you. Right. You know what I mean? But it's like, that does not matter because it's like, when you're true to yourself, it's like people hear you. Wow. Like piano playing, I was like, you know, like there's this one lick that I've been trying to play for the last 10 years of my life and I still can't play it. It's so annoying because there's a what? guy. What? Oscar can't play something? It's because uh, I, I grew up in a more gospel church and they're like, they're like lick for days. They can play like all across the piano. Wow. I, I remember I was like, I remember when I was learning it and I was still am learning it because I can't perfect it. You know, it's like, I was like, I can't play this pentatonic skill, like up, down, up, whatever. But then like when I chose to die to that almost, <laughs> the idea that I, I just can't. Wow. And I chose to like, hey, I'm just going to be myself here is when I truly have found my voice in creating because I'm like, I can express something in music, which is a timeless language to the Lord that resonates for some reason that I can't explain why with others. Yeah. Does that make sense? It so makes sense. Yes. And as you're talking, I'm thinking, the first thing I would say about divine creativity is that it's born of God. Yes. Because 100%. it's divine. 100%. Right? So it's born of God. And if it's born of God, then he is the one. Yes, I'm a vessel, but he's the one who brings it to fruition. He like yes. calls it out of me. He pulls it out of me. And I think something you said is so key, which is being yourself. 100%. So it's like divine creativity is born of God. He's birthing something fr through me. But in that birthing process, it's not going to look perfect. No. It's not going to be polished. It's not going to be pretty. It really, I think if it's polished and pretty the first go, it's not as good as it could be. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Or you're striving. 100%. And I'm preaching to the choir and you know me. I feel like <laughs> something I struggle with a lot is like striving or trying to be perfect or, and the Lord has taken me a long way. But I just, I think of a couple weeks ago, I, I woke up and I just had an anxious feeling in my chest. Have you ever felt that? Where I you're guess. like, physically, I feel like there's a hand on me and I'm anxious. So I woke up feeling that way, went to my piano and I was like, I don't think anything is going to take this anxious feeling away. Well, I know nothing but the Lord, but I don't think anything's going to work but to sing and play. Mm -hmm. It just, I just had that feeling of like, you know? And so I think divine creativity a lot of times is birthed through always really, I feel like through our own process and our 100%. own lives and what we're going through, good, bad, and ugly. And that morning it was ugly. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, Lord, I'm anxious. I'm anxious. And I just start playing and I'm like, God, will you take this away? And he's like, just sing, just sing. And so I just start to sing this chorus. All anxiety has to bow at your feet. And literally within 25 minutes, I had two verses, a chorus and a bridge. Mm. And I like to co-write a lot. I don't write songs easily on my own. And so I knew in that moment that, Yes, it was. I was a vessel, and God birthed something through me. But it, it had very little to do with me. Mm -hmm. Besides, I just brought my heart, and I brought what I was going through, which was which anxiety. And now, when I'm feeling that, I felt it again this morning. I woke up and I sang the whole song, and I was like, oh, I feel so much better. And so, I think divine creativity is so powerful for the individual person 100%. because it gives us a way to connect with God, and so it gives us a way to connect with Him, and then. And then when divine creativity is birthed for like the church or for, you know, um, more people than just us, it's really powerful because it carries the spirit of our testimony. 100%. And in Revelation 19.10, it says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So it's like the testimony in your life is a testimony of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The testimony in my life is a testimony of Jesus, right? And that in itself is the spirit of prophecy. And it's saying, do it again 100%. for whoever's listening. So there's so much to say about divine creativity, but yeah, those are my thoughts. And that's really good. I, and I think for, for me, one time I was going through a hard time. I think for anyone that's like creative, which that word again, it's a little triggering to me. I don't know why. Just what the church, is? Cre a creative being, you know, whatever. <laughs> Oscar, you are a creative being. <laughs> yes, I'm like, <laughs> I am Oscar. Okay, whatever. <laughs> oh 
But um, it's like, because for me, it's like also understanding the way someone works. You know, like for me, I was talking to my wife about this the other day. I'm like, I feel 24 seven. I don't know what I'm feeling. And a lot of times I have to process what I'm feeling to pinpoint that. But it's like, it could be a good emotion. It could be a bad emotion. But if I, and the beautiful thing about music, it's like, I can, I can actually process that with the Lord, with my piano. I'm not the best singer, but I can sing to the Lord. And, you know, and those are the most vulnerable moments. And one time uh, I was just felt kind of like numb. And my friend's like, I think you're emotionally constipated. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean emotionally that's so constipated? Real. That's just a random question. Like, yeah, that's a weird way to put it. Weird way to say it. But I was like, what? In a sense, like I haven't, like I, it's like, it's to a place. And I think anyone's felt like this, like, like you haven't processed your emotion. Oh yeah. It's just all that built up. you just don't feel. Wow. And you're numb. You're numb. And then life kind of just comes at you day by day and you're not aware of God. You're not aware of your surroundings. You're not aware of your friendships. Cause it's like, like I think about this. I had this idea one day. I was like, you know, me and my wife were driving back from church and I was like, this is the only moment today at this day that we're going to drive back from church. And I believe that God Whoa. has things for me to connect with her about. Wow, that's beautiful. You know? We need people like you, Oscar. Or like, I've never or, had that thought you in my know, life. Or like, or like today, God has ideas, like any relationship, that, like like if you see it that way, like it kind of opens up your heart. Like yeah. God has, every person that you meet at the coffee shop that you just randomly would meet, it's like you have the choice to either be present or to be disconnected. So true. You have the choice to be present with God today or disconnected. But if you're aware of your surroundings, aware with God, aware that like, man, like, like I have, this happened to me a lot of times. I've had ideas in my head that I don't execute. And then next, you know, six to eight months later, I'm like, there was, someone else did it. I've seen that too. You know? And I'm yes. like, but again, it's, it's not that like, God's like, Oh, I'm not going to give it to Oscar. Yeah. Or I'm not going to give done. it to Sarah Beth. Right. It's like, God has has ideas and plans because he wants things to progress. And it's like, you know, my role is to say yes. I think about Reinhard Bonnke, I heard real quick. I don't know how much time you have left. Well, I just realized I forgot to set the timer. <laughs> <laughs> so we can wrap it up, but go ahead. Yeah, but he was the seventh pick person that yeah. God wanted to choose. The seventh. The seventh. number of completion. Yeah, which is kind of crazy. crazy. But he just said yes. And I think for anyone that's creative, if you write, if you write books— if you're a pastor, if you're a worship leader, if you're a stay-at-home mom, whatever your title can be, there is creativity for you. That is so good. So, it's, And it's like your job is just to be present with God and present with what God's given you. Yes. And then ideas, thoughts, strategies will come to you. And your job is just to say yes and, ex- and execute. Yes. He'll give you the grace to execute. And that's the key. I think that's the key. If, if I had a handlebar... Quote unquote, yeah, go for it. That's what I would say. Just being present with God and being present with the people around you, not thinking about yesterday or tomorrow, mm-hmm. thinking about today, and then doing the best that you can do today. Because in reality, like tomorrow's not promised. Right. Like, just, we don't know. It's not promised. And it's like if you can live that way, that like, you know, like you're not riding on yesterday's successes or tomorrow's failures or vice versa. Because if, if 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 you say, I'm thankful I've had a quote unquote successful career, but that if that was my identity, it's like I would not show up to the studio daily, you know. Or for no, example, it's not going to keep like, me there. It's not going to keep me there, you yeah. know. It's like or someone that goes through. I heard recently someone like that lost a lot of weight. He has a picture on his phone of him at his highest weight. He's lost a lot of weight. Yeah, and he's like, if I if I choose to to be, you know, to like I've done it. It's like you will not do the things that got you there. Wow. And then you actually start to regress. Wow. So it's like as a creative person, it's like one, uh, be present, protect your heart space, your emotional space, your head space, your spiritual sp- spiritual walk with the Lord. Very, very important. Yes. Um, and just be honest and just be present with if it's a little chorus, if it's a whole song, if it's an idea of how to, how to be more, you know, if whatever, how to. Make a dinner. Write it down, right? Yeah, like cr- making dinners creative. Yeah. You know, going so on date nights creative. Like all that is creative yeah. and allowing that to be like, uh, and also like with creativity, like let there be play. 
you know, someone, I read a book once that said like every creative person should have 30 minutes of just playful creativity, mm. almost like touching back of your kid senses. Yeah. Like you need playful creativity for it to be authentic. That's good. So like every th- 30 minutes, sit down. If it means painting. Yeah. If it means going on walks and looking at nature and writing stuff down or whatever that creative thing is. And usually it's attached to your childhood. Wow. It's like step into that fully and don't think about the end goal or the purpose Ooh. because you start to uh, create from a pure place because the purity of that place translates. Wow. So be present and say yes. Yeah, and say yes. That's yeah. so good. My handlebar is practical and it's get out your journal and don't hold back. Don't try to make it sound pretty or polished, but just write mm. what comes out. Yes. I think start there. If you've yes. never, never done that before, do that. And then take that into your area of creativity. So if it's cooking, let it get a little messy. You know, maybe don't follow a recipe and just go for it and eyeball things. And, you know, if it's songwriting, then don't try to write the best chorus or the best 100%. verse or the best. And yeah, just go for it. And Say if, what you think. And if you fail, it's you fail. Like I remember when we, yeah. when we first got, just to end it, when we first got married, we went to Tulum and we had some incredible food. And me being my overachiever self was like, I am going to replicate that, replicate that meal. <laughs> it was the worst thing ever. But you had fun? <laughs> I don't know if I had fun. You didn't have fun? <laughs> I was like so caught up with how I was like, oh my gosh, I spent a hundred dollars oh, on oh, this meal. At Whole Foods? <laughs> I went to Whole Foods because I wanted to be like, we're like newly married. I'm like, Aww. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Horrible. But don't let it cut, get catch up on you because now like it actually like hindered me. I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to cook because I suck. That was my mindset. There you go. Fast forward five years later, I'm starting to cook again. I'm like, I love cooking. Yeah. It's a great creative outlet. But I let myself like, because it, I failed, it actually hindered me. That's good. To step into more creative things. Just do the best that you can. Be you okay have. with Be failing. Be okay with failing. That's it's good. like, just try again and yeah, just enjoy it. Yes. Have fun. Yes. It's born of God and sustained by God. Yes. And you can have fun in the process. So. That is a wrap. I'm sorry for not setting the timer. First handlebar podcast slash session where we've never had a timer. So you're welcome. It's cool. It's creative, right? Yes. (laughs) Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next time. What's up, guys? My name is Zay. I'm from North Carolina. Um, I'm an active listener of the Handlebar Podcast. Two things I love about this podcast is how practical it is, but also how authentic it is. And just being able to marry those two things together and just, you know, hear the Holy Spirit voice through that, I think is an awesome thing. So um, if you enjoy that episode, go ahead and subscribe here on YouTube. And you can also uh, stream on any podcast platform there is. Continue to check us out.